Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bakley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bakley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bakley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and today we have an powerful, anointed broadcast. No question about it, guys. The final countdown to Revelation was a, a webinar we did. And in that webinar, we had a very, very interesting interview with Dave Robbins. And it's amazing how he broke down the scriptures in Revelation chapter 6. It is a different perspective, and I'll be right back to tell you more in just a moment. The world is experiencing an alarming series of apocalyptic events, historic weather disasters, earthquakes, droughts, wildfires, impending economic collapse, the rise of AI. In Revelation 9-11, Pastor Paul Begley and Pulitzer-nominated journalist Troy Anderson investigate if these are the true signs of the end times. Is this the final meeting of current events and prophecy referred to in the Bible? Revelation 9-11. Order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target.com. All right, all right. Now, we held a webinar called The Final Countdown to Revelation, in which I chose some very good experts in Bible prophecy, and I assigned each guy a chapter in Revelation. Today, you're going to hear of Revelation chapter 6, a different perspective, as I'm interviewing Dave Robbins. Dave is now the president and the head of End Time Ministries that, of course, once was Dr. Irvin Baxter. Matter of fact, Dave is uh, the son-in-law of Dr. Irvin Baxter. He has an ability to study scriptures, to break it down for you, and to give you a perspective of it that maybe you didn't see. It's a powerful interview, and I want us to set back and take it in as we learn from the Word of God here on the coming apocalypse. Let's go now to the interview. The book of Revelation really has a, a skeletal structure, if you will, of three groups of seven. It has seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials. The four horsemen are the first four seals of the seven seals. And we find this prophecy located in Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. So let's first examine the verses 1 and 2 of Revelation chapter 6. And it says the following, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. So he's asking John, to, Come and see, John, I want to show you something. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now notice in verse 1, the Lamb, who we know to be Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, who is opening the seals, John said the Lamb opened one of the seals, the first seal, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts. Now, according to Ezekiel, these beasts were cherubim. And then John continues. He says, one of the beasts saying, come and see, and I saw and behold a white horse. Each horse is a different color here in Revelation chapter 6. And the colors are very, very important, which we'll get to in just a moment. But John says, I beheld a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So notice the first horse is a white horse. A second horse is a red horse. And that's revealed in Revelation 6, verse 3 through 4. And the Bible says, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And he went there. There went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth 
and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. And then there was a third horse, and it's a black horse. Now that's found in Revelation chapter 6, verse 5 through 6. And it says, And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, there was a black horse. Now many many people would refer to this pastor as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. That's what we're going through here, but they're not physical horses. I want you to understand that. We're going to tell you what they are here in just a moment. But this third horse was a black horse, and he that sat upon him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. But see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Then finally there was a fourth horse. And the King James Version refers to this as a pale horse horse. And it's revealed in Revelation chapter 6, verse 7 through 8. It says, And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, there was a pale horse, and his name that sat upon him was Death. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Now, wow, I mean, I, we're talking about the four horsemen of the apocalypse here, and I've seen movies about this. I've seen video clips. I've seen books and different things of people saying that, well, these are four physical horses that are going to come riding across the earth and destroying all of mankind or at least a, the, a big part of it and destroying cities and different things. But that we're going to find in this lesson that simply is not the case. So in the, it's it's located here in Revelation chapter six, verse one through eight. It reveals four horses: a white horse, a red horse, a black horse, and a pale horse. Now, what we want to know is is what are these colors referring to? Many of the major prophecies in the Bible are given to us, you know, two, three, even four and five times. Well, when you read other accounts of this same prophecy, or many times of another prophecy, they provide better clarity, right? You got to tie all the verses pertaining to that prophecy to get the full scope of what the writer's trying to say. So it's like it's like being put a uh, putting a puzzle together and then seeing the big picture once the puzzle is completed. Well, there's another account of this prophecy about the four horses referred to in Revelation 6, verse 1 through 8. There's another account found back in the Old Testament in Zechariah, chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. Zechariah saw the same colored horses, but he saw them pulling chariots. And additionally, instead of pale horses, Zechariah saw grizzled and bay horses. Well, Zechariah chapter 6, verse 4 through 5, tells us what these horses symbolize. He, uh, it said, and I said, and I answered and said unto the angel that was talking with me, what are these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said unto Zechariah, these are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. So this is a very, very big clue as to what are these horses in Revelation chapter six. So the question is, what do these horses symbolize? Well, the four colored horsemen, they actually symbolize four spirits. That's what Zechariah tells us. With, and, and of course, these are the four main political and religious ideologies of mankind today. What spirit would represent the, the a red horse or the red spirit in the earth today? Well, there is an international spirit who influences what uh, people believe how they live, what they do. The red spirit in the earth today is red China, red Russia, red Romania. The red spirit is communism. Communism is commonly associated with the color red, and communism has widespread influence over what people believe, what they value, what they love, and, and even what they will fight for. So in Revelation 6, uh, verse 3 through 4, it says, And power was given unto this red spirit, or this red horse, that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. 
So think about r socialism, communism, from its very outset, uh, from the, the Bolshevik Revolution back in 1917 to the China Revolution in 1949, and also the conflicts of Korea, uh, Vietnam, and the Congo, communism has robbed our world of peace. And then this passage continues by saying, and they that should kill one another. Not only do communists uh, fight their own enemies, but they fight amongst themselves as well. Uh, let me give you an example. So you remember back um, when uh, Stalin killed 20 million Russians during his reign in the Soviet Union, his own people. And over the past 60 years or so, 60 million Chinese have been killed in the uh, well, the Cultural Revolution. And this prophecy also says, and there was given unto him a great sword. Well, of course, there's a, a, a mighty military force that backs communism. I mean, uh, imagine uh, going to war with a, um, like a, a Russia and a China at the same time, or a, or a China and a South Korea. So if you remember that the Soviet Union flag with the hammer and sickle was red, Red is the uh, the color most commonly associated with communism and socialism. The two ideologies are really synonymous terms. Communism is the political ideology. Socialism is the economic system that works hand in hand with communism. So this is the the red power, the red spirit, the the power of communism in the earth today. It was prophesied about uh, what would that be two thousand years ago, just about now. In Revelation chapter 6, it's the red horse, the red spirit. So let's go to the black horse. What ideology or spirit does the black horse represent? Well, we're going to move on down to Revelation chapter 6, verse 5 through 6. It reveals instead of having a sword, the rider on the black horse has a pair of balances. And balances really represent um, kind of like trade and commerce, the counterpart to communism, or the spirit of communism, the red horse spirit, is capitalism. Capitalism has been in contest with communism ever since the, the Cold War. And trade and commerce is what makes capitalism work. It is, it is free enterprise that motivates the spirit of capitalism. Now, Revelation chapter 6, verse 6 says, a measure of wheat for a penny. Now, remember, these are clues showing us or characteristics of these spirits in the earth in the end time. So Revelation 6, 6, it says, a measure of wheat for a penny, um, uh, three measures of barley for a penny. See thou hurt not the oil and the wine. If you understand in a capitalistic country or a capitalistic society, everything revolves around the economy, right? I mean, people in a capitalist country, they vote for leadership based on the effect uh, that the outcome will have on their pocketbooks. John prophesied that there would be spirits represented by these colored horses in Revelation chapter 6. Zechariah said they would be spirits that control the ideologies of mankind, the, the thought processes of mankind at the time or just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ in the end time. Let me give you one final aspect of this prophecy. Uh, because you really need to understand this. The Old Testament, um, the Old Testament account of this prophecy is amazing because it not only tells us what all of these things symbolize, but it even tells us in what part of the world these spirits will have influence. Zechariah chapter 6, verse 6 through 8 says that the black horses which are therein go forth into the north country and the white go forth after them. And then verse 8 says, then cried the he upon me and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go forth towards the north country, they have quieted my spirit in the north country. It says that the black horses go into the north country. Well, what does capitalism, where, where does the spirit of capitalism rule in our world? All of the capitalist countries are in the northern hemisphere, by and large. 80% of the world's wealth is found in the northern hemisphere. And in fact, in the vernacular of the United Nations, they speak about the North and the South conflict. The Northern states are the haves, the South nations are the have-nots. And 
what nations are in the South? Well, they, they are primarily the poverty-stricken nations in uh, South America and in Africa. And it also says that capitalism goes into the North Country and Catholicism goes after it, or the white spirit. And this is true in all of the Northern Europe and including Great Britain, France, Germany, etc. Now, we would all agree that capitalism reigns supreme in America. And again, this is the spirit of capitalism, and it is in the North Country. What we see playing out in the world today is exactly what John prophesied 2,000 years ago. You say, well, how in the world is that possible? Because the Bible tells us that God knows the end from the beginning. God has already seen all this stuff play out, and he went back to the writers of the Bible, the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament prophets, and said, here's what I want you to write. And that's the way that these prophecies are coming to pass in such intricate detail, because God has already seen all this stuff play out. Now, the final thing I want you to understand here before we move on is in Zechariah chapter 6, 8, it says, Behold, these that go forth in the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. Why would it say that? Well, most great religious revivals happening in our world today are happening in the southern hemisphere. What you say, well, why? Well, the majority of people living in capitalist countries, they're too busy to have a revival, right? I mean, men, women, and children, they're, they're working. No one has time to uh, no one has time for God, or at least by and large. God made it necessary for us to have money. That's absolutely true. I mean, but the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Many folks in a capitalist countries that they're too busy building their own kingdom instead of God's kingdom. And it can be said that capitalism has quieted God's spirit in the North Country. So if the red spirit represents communism or socialism and the black spirit represents capitalism, what does the white horse spirit represent? Well, in his book titled Communism, Democracy, and Catholic Power, there was a uh, um, uh, the political scientist Paul Blanchard. He contended that it, there were uh, that there were three powers, and that these three belief systems that they they would control what the nations do and what individuals do. And he said almost every conflict between the nations in modern history has been produced by conflicts among these three powers. He said they were communism, democracy, and Catholicism. Now, is it possible that? Catholicism could be the white power in Revelation chapter 6. Mr. Malachi Martin, who was one of the foremost Roman Catholic writers of the 20th century, he says in the very first chapter, Keys of This Blood, he said the question is not, is there going to be a world government? That's He said that's a, that's a settled issue. All nations are now interdependent, and the only question is, who will rule the coming one world government? And he, con he continued and he said, there are three, only three geopolitical powers in the necessary, uh, with the necessary doctrine and structure to rule a world government. Communism, Catholicism, and capitalism. Therefore, we have to consider if the white spirit represents Catholicism. And it's in the tradition of the Catholic Church, many of you know that the Pope will dress in white. Almost all the time that you see him, he's dressed in white. He He's dressed in white, um, and the so also the Pope's helicopter is white. The bulletproof vehicle that the Pope has, the, the Pope mobile, that was built uh, for the Pope after John Paul II, after his 81 assassination attempt, and it's white. The jet airplane that's supplied by Alitalia Airlines for the Pope to use in his travels around the world, that's white. So it, it seems that, and I'm, I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm just going to try to get through all these proofs here. I don't have time to go through all of them. There are many, many, many more. But it seems the color white has an obvious association to Catholicism. So here's the question. If the Pope had a horse, what color would it be? Well, of course, it would be a white horse, right? Catholicism became an official religion around 300 AD, and Karl Marx wrote his Communist Manifesto in, what, the 1850. And in recent times, capitalism has also become 
a powerful force. So the seals of Revelation tell a, a long story that ends at the Battle of Armageddon when the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. The, the seven trumpets, remember that we're talking about the skeletal structure. Look at Revelation, the seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. The seven trumpets tell a, a shorter story or a shorter set of events, and they also end at the Battle of Armageddon. And then the seven vials, they tell even a shorter story which end at the Battle of Armageddon as well. So Revelation 17 reveals the end-time government of the Antichrist, and this government is painted red. And that's a very important clue when we're trying to figure out the book of Revelation in its entirety, and it also ties back into Revelation chapter 6. There are other scriptures that tell us the seven-headed, ten-horned beast of Revelation 13, 1 through 8, symbolizes the end-time world government of the Antichrist. And then another scripture also mentions this same seven-headed, ten-horned beast. If you look closely here at the verse, Revelation 17, 3, you will see a very important characteristic which allows us to understand the, the, uh, the prophecy in a very specific way. Revelation 17, 3 says, So he carried me away in the Spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit on the back of a scarlet or a red-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Again, that's Revelation 17, 3. So in this prophecy, the scarlet color or red is of great significance. This clue reveals the political ideology of the kingdom of the Antichrist, and that's going to be socialism or communism. The Antichrist will be a socialist and a communist. So, based on what we've already learned here concerning the, the correlation between the colors and the powers, it seems obvious the end-time world government will be a socialistic or a communistic world governing body. All right, all right, folks. I mean, uh, really a powerful and very, very informative uh, approach and actual uh definition of a lot of things. I think that Dave Robbins brought some uh, points in that some of you may have never heard. Uh, the fact that he really focused on the colors of the horses and the powers that go with them. I thought that was uh, very interesting, especially when he brought up the communism, Catholicism, capitalism part of his uh, presentation. Uh, how that these uh, this is kind of the ideology, if you will, especially the socialism and communism side of it. Is He was saying that those two, socialism and communism, are really going to be the ideology of the beast kingdom, of this new world order, this one world government. And I agree with that. And you, that's why you see the UN pushing Agenda 2030. It's why you see all these different World Economic Forum pushing the Great Reset. We're watching all that take place. And then when he read Revelation 17, 3, it says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having the seven heads and ten horns. Well, obviously, it's the same thing as the beast found in Revelation chapter uh, uh, 6. Uh, and Revelation chapter 13. This represents the beast or the beast kingdom, the spirit of the Antichrist who is going to rule this world with a rod of iron and uh, Christianity and Jews. Christians and Jews are going to be the target in this unbelievable uh, prophetic events. We're entering in. You could see it already going on now uh, when you watch the events unfolding today. So uh, this is really an important chapter, and we appreciate what Dave Robbins brought to us today. I'll be right back in just a moment. The clock is counting down, but to what? Like a dark road with no directions. But Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries brings it all to light in a fascinating DVD series, The Final Countdown, Road to Revelation. A dozen experts deep dive into the book of Revelation to give you new direction in these last days. 
Order the final countdown, Road to Revelation, now at paulbegleyprophecy.com. All right, folks, all right. You know, it's unbelievable when you think about how the events of the book of Revelation are unfolding right before our very eyes. This webinar that we did called Countdown to Revelation, we actually have it available at our website if you want to get the entire webinar DVD series from all these great speakers, including Dr. Dave Robbins. Matter of fact, we will have Dr. Dave Robbins back next week to continue Revelation chapter 6. And sometimes the book of Revelation can be a mystery. It is, really, and it can be a little confusing. And for, even for believers, even for those of us that are washed in the blood and know Jesus as our Savior, there's still a lot of symbolism, a lot of different things to look at, moving parts. Some of that, I really believe, a lot of that was purposely done by God to kind of have us study and search and watch so that we'd be awake during these last days. But not everybody's saved. And maybe you're watching right now and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. And maybe the book of Revelation even makes you afraid. Don't be afraid. It's to warn us of the end times. You already can see how wicked the world is getting. The Bible says, because iniquity abound, the love of many a wax cold. But you can be saved today. You can be born again. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Lord, I want to be saved. I want to know that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God, and I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to make me a new creature in Christ Jesus. Wash me, cleanse, cleanse me with your love and your grace, and I ask it right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Wow. I tell you, as we've been going through the book of Revelation and looking at all the things happening, we truly can see it's the end times. Go to my website, paulbegleyprophecy.com. You can find out a, a lot of information, including my new book, Revelation 9-11. And I'll see you next week with Dr. Dave Robbins on the coming apocalypse. The clock is counting down, but to what? like a dark road with no directions. But Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries brings it all to light in a fascinating DVD series, The Final Countdown, Road to Revelation. A dozen experts deep dive into the book of Revelation to give you new direction in these last days. Order The Final Countdown, Road to Revelation, now at paulbegleyprophecy.com.